Someone has said, pay today and play tomorrow or play today and pay tomorrow. The choice is yours. What one makes of his time today will determine the outcome that awaits him tomorrow. Hear what this giant said. Benjamin Franklin said, do you love life? Doth thou love life? Then don't squander time, invest it, for that is the stuff life is made up of. Shakespeare, that literally giant said, I wasted time, now time doth waste me. Our own Namdi Azikwe said, give me my youth back and I will pay any price for it. That's how valuable this season is in your life. Settle down and explore the hidden treasures embedded on your inside and you'll be glad you did. Therefore, endeavor to invest your time in your study to surely show tomorrow. In addition, invest your time in reading up materials that will help create the future you desire. The wider you read, the larger your capacity of creativity, insight, innovations. If you don't have time for good works, you will surely have time for evil works because nature abhors vacuum. Nature abhors vacuum. Come with me and let's go to somewhere. You say, where? just let's go. And you stay follow. No agenda, no program, free for all, pay as you go. Before you know where you are, you have been led to drug business. You are caught and in prison. I've never seen any young man in prison where the parents went there with them. I told you before. I told you before. Bye-bye. He goes home to eat. Everyone will bear his own body. If you are busy, you escape too many evils. What is your priority in life? What is your priority? The Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness first and other things shall be added what is your number one on your scale of preferences what is your number one what is your priority when you wake up in the morning what comes to mind first In your thought of making money, it is for what purpose? Is it just to become wealthy and then become have a lot of houses and things? Or to be comfortable enough to face God without distraction? What is your priority in life? It defines what you are living for. When you see men who don't die, even after physically they are gone, there are people who make life count for others. There are those, like God's son, Dr. Paul will say, there are those who are alive, they cannot be remembered. And there are those who are dead longest time, they cannot be forgotten. Why are you alive and nobody remembers you? You are not consequential in the family. Rather, you are a problem causer. Make life count. In helping others find a way, you also find your way. You get committed in helping others to find their way, then you also find your way. That is number one. That is, you can't miss the road if you are assisting others to find the road to their own destiny. You can't. Number two, it means what you make happen for others will happen for you. One John Milton said, as the morning shows the day, so the child shows the man. We can tell where you are going by watching how you live today. I learned at the age of 16 that it's good that a man bears his yoke in his youth. Lamentation 3, 7, 3, 27. And with my childlike faith, I prayed to God to help me bear my yoke in my youth so I will not have to bear any yoke in my old age. Nothing happens by mistake. The Bible says to walk circumspectly Ephesians chapter 5 as wise and not as unwise and where is the wisdom capture all of the keys that can help you redeem time because the days are evil so your wisdom is your ability to have dominion over time are we together now the Bible says whoever can access the secrets that give you an advantage over time you are walking in wisdom The greatest gift God gave man aside salvation is time. Are we together now? And the unit of destiny is time. 
whatever affects your time affects your destiny are we together we are talking about time redemption here the bible says to walk circumspectly the word circumspect means accurately that means you do not have time to dilly dal and shadow box and guess around make mistakes you will not always have the time to correct it so our work in this earth requires a measure of accuracy and it says in doing that you have dominion over time and you walk in wisdom when you master time ask a dying man what he would want he would not tell you real estate ask a dying man what he would want he would not tell you a political position ask a dying man what he would want he will not tell you he wants more degrees and all of that as important as they are a dying man's request is more time please look up you have to understand this the real asset of a believer is not just land it's not just investments it's time whatever attacks your time has attacked your life to live life to chance gives nobody a chance both in this world and in the world to come. I told this story before. Some, somewhere in the eastern part of the country, a very big man was dying, has died. They were burying him. And a madman stood by the graveyard. And they're about to pour the earth. He said, hold on. What of the man's lorry? Put it inside him. What of the man's cars? Take it along with him. Then eyes opened to see that Job said, Naked we came from our mother's womb. Naked we shall return. We brought nothing here. We shall take nothing out. You make life count for others. The fame will come. The popularity will come. The status will come. The wealth will come your value your real worth in life is not what you have but what you add you don't lack what you give you only lack what you keep your real value in life is what you add when you say how much worth is the man what is the worth of the woman what is she worth your worth is not what you have it's not your car and your houses. Your worth is what you add. Time is very, very important. Oh, teach us to number our days, he says. Not because we're afraid of dying. He says that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. So the Bible says to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise, redeeming the time. Why? The days are evil.